today, I'm going to answer your most commonly asked questions, as well as giving some tips and tricks that'll help you create your own potion bottles. One of the things that I get the most comments and questions on is, why do I use rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol instead of just water? And here's why. Regular water over time, I'm not saying instantly, I'm not even saying in months, will get gross. It will grow things in it. It'll get slimy, murky. You'll get just weird things inside of your water. So I like to use the rubbing alcohol. Things don't grow in it. I personally think you get a better swirl from the rubbing alcohol than you do just regular water or even water with glycerin. I feel like that gives you just a little bit more bubbles, which for some potions may be something you're going for. But for me, I do prefer the alcohol. Now, You could also use distilled water, and notice I said distilled water, and that's because distilled water is what they use for sterilizing medical equipment. It doesn't have any minerals or contaminants in it, which makes it ideal for things not growing in it. So besides the distilled water, I do recommend that you add one of two different things to it. One being either a couple drops, and I do mean just a couple drops. You do not need to add a ton of this. This is glycerin. It's what gets mixed with distilled water in a snow globe. So again, it's just making it more of a stable environment. It's adding just a little bit of thickness and viscosity to the water, so it'll help the things swirl in there a little bit more. But it's going to help keep things from growing in your bottle. Now, if you don't want to use glycerin, the other thing you could do is use distilled water and just a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and the rubbing alcohol with the distilled water will do the same thing. It'll keep things from growing in it, and it'll make it more of a stable environment for your potions. Again, that being said, I do prefer the rubbing alcohol, but I completely understand that in some situations it's not readily available. In some countries it's not easy to get, so that's why I wanted to give you some other options of the distilled water with glycerin or distilled water with just a little bit of alcohol. The next thing I want to talk about is the corks. I get a lot of questions about this, but this is also a tip from me. I highly recommend that if you are going to do alcohol-based potions like I make most of the time, you're going to want to invest in a bag of assorted rubber corks. They come in black, white, a couple other colors. They make a really big difference. The main feature being they help with evaporation. So I don't care what you make your potion out of, if it's water, if it's alcohol, hand sanitizer, whatever it may be you are going to get some evaporation. However, you will get less evaporation if you use a rubber cork. You'll also get less evaporation depending on how and where you store your potions. So if you have your potions in a really sunny, warm area, they're going to evaporate very, very quickly. It's just nature. It's how it works. But if you have your potions in a room temperature area and it's not by a lot of sunlight, they'll last for years and years to come. I've had some of my potions for almost a decade now, and they have very little or no evaporation to them. And a lot of that, I think, just has to do with the fact that there's really no natural sunlight coming into my Harry Potter room where I have all of them stored. And that room is kept at a very room temperature climate. Now, another reason I like to use the rubber corks with my alcohol potions is If you leave these, you have to encapsulate the regular cork because cork and alcohol can actually be a fire starter. So as long as you encapsulate this, say with sealing wax or hot glue, you'll be fine. But otherwise, you're just kind of asking, one, for a lot of evaporation and two, for a potential risk of being able to set it on fire pretty easily. Now, if you want to use the regular corks, I highly recommend you just do the water with glycerin and then you don't have to worry about it as much, but I will say you will still get more evaporation with a regular cork than you will with a rubber cork. So I highly recommend investing in an assorted bag. It just helps your potions last longer and to me that's an investment that's well worth it and I'll put a link to some rubber corks down below. Another thing I get a lot of questions on is coloring your potions. So do you use liquid food coloring, alcohol ink, gel food coloring, paint? Does it all work? Will it all work? The answer to that is yes, it will all work. Alcohol ink works. You're going to have to use a little bit more than you do food coloring, but yes, it will work. Liquid food coloring definitely works. Probably is one of the best mediums to color it with. Alcohol ink works really well too. Gel food coloring, as you guys have seen, I have used this in tons of videos, and yes, it works as well. Now, Gel food coloring will take a little bit more time for it to actually dissolve into the alcohol, so then that way you get the color 
dispersed. Sometimes you'll even get little grains of the color at the bottom of the potion that you kind of have to break up a little bit. Here's a tip to avoid that. If you take just a little bit of warm water, it doesn't have to be hot, just warm water, and add the amount of gel food coloring you think you want to add to your potion, mix it in that warm water first. It's going to dissolve it completely and then you can add it into your potion. Now even if you're using an alcohol-based potion, if you add just a little bit of water to it, you're going to be fine because that alcohol is going to keep things from growing in it, but it will help your gel food coloring break down and mix in with your base a lot easier. Ideally, liquid food coloring is probably my favorite to use. I feel like it just mixes in really easy and you know what color you're getting right away. Some people have used watercolor and you can do that too. I just know that sometimes watercolor can settle a little bit at the bottom of the bottle so you don't get as strong of a pigmentation as you would with a food coloring. Now, another item you guys have seen me use is acrylic paint and not just acrylic paint, it is acrylic metallic paint. And that's because it has mica powder in it, but it is also still a paint. So it has pigmentation. It's going to color your alcohol as well. So with any of these acrylic paints, you're going to get some kind of base color in your liquid as well as that mica powder that's incorporated that gives it that metallic -y swirl. But all of these options will work really well for your potions. Again, alcohol ink, you might have to use a little bit more. The liquid food coloring works really well. Add a little bit of warm water to your gel food coloring if it's not mixing or breaking down well, and that will help it to incorporate into your potion a little bit easier. And while I have the metallic acrylic paint out here, let's talk about metallic acrylic paint versus mica powder. Now, as I said, the reason I use metallic acrylic paint is because it has mica powder in it and it will give you that swirl. You can get these bottles for two dollars, a dollar, depending on what it is, sometimes even less at your craft store. So this makes a very cost-effective option to be able to get swirly potions. Now they're not going to be color changing per se. With these color shift you will get um, more of a difference in the swirl with the color but it's still going to be the color of the paint so if I make a potion out of this bottle it's going to still be this tealy green color and then it's just going to have the mica settle and then when you shake it up that will swirl but you're not going to get a color shift like we get with say my wig and weld potion where with my wig and weld potion it started out as green and then when I shake it up, because it has a magenta mica powder in it, we get this purple-blue swirl in here. So this one is able to do a color shift. And that is because our base was just the alcohol with some food coloring, and then we used a mica powder. So being able to create color shift potions is a really cool way to use the mica powder. Now, I don't always make my mica powder potions a color shift. Sometimes it just goes from being a dark purple color to a lighter purple color when it gets shaken up. That way it's all monochromatic. But we're getting the same swirl detail we get with the paint. You just have more options to be able to have it shift with another base color. Now, you can get mica powders in a lot of different places. Michael's sells them. Hobby Lobby sells them. This is one from Michael's. This is part of the Recollections collection. Um, these are pretty affordable, and they have quite a few different colors, and these work out really, really well. I will say my favorite brand is probably this Nodway brand that you can get on Amazon. You can get a whole box of these with a whole bunch of different colors that we've used in several different potions for very little money. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. They also have a gold, silver, bronze set, which we'll be using in some future videos that I just picked up. But I do find that their mica powders work really, really well for me, and they give us a really nice shift. They have a lot of different options, and they are very pretty. Would you like a chance to win a monthly potion bottle? Then consider supporting me over on Patreon. All of my patrons have a chance to win a monthly potion bottle. Link is in the description down below. Patreon not your speed, we also have membership here on YouTube. You get special emojis and badges just for being a member that you can use in the comment section. Link down below. 
So all that so far being said, let's go ahead and make a little bit of a potion here. So I have my glass bottle. I'm using a funnel. This one happens to be a glass one. And we're going to take our rubbing alcohol and I am just going to fill this bottle a little over halfway up. Now I'm going to use some of this neon pink liquid food coloring. This was a mixed pack from Kroger's. They have neon colors and standard. And we're gonna start with just one drop so far. Cause you can always add more, but you can't take it out. And I actually think that's a perfect color. So just one drop was just enough. Now we're gonna make this one a color shifting potion. Now. I could have mixed all of this together in the bottle. I don't need to do it in a separate container, but it is really cool to watch how the separate container mixes with the original color. And that's why I do it for you guys. So we're gonna start with that much. I do find that if you're gonna be an avid potion maker, these scientific instruments that get used for things like mica powder work really well. I'll put a link to some of these down below as well. We're gonna take some of this mica powder from Michael's. And this one happens to be a violet. And I think I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more that really well. And then we're going to pour this into our potion. So as you can see, we got a really great color change from that bright corally pink to this deep magenta hot pink. So when this settles, it will be more of that corally pink color. Another tip that I would like to give is before you put your rubber cork or even your regular cork in for that matter, take a paper towel and just make sure that the neck of your bottle is good and dry. You're gonna get a much better seal. You'll have less of a chance of your cork popping out but you just wanna make sure that everything is good and dry. Then we can take our cork and really put a shit in good. And sometimes giving it a little bit of a twist kind of helps lock it in as well. And then we can shake our beautiful swirling potion up. If you have kids or you're gonna transport these or anything like that, I do recommend that if you don't do wax seal or hot glue drips on here, that you seal it with a glue. I really like the Gorilla Glue contact adhesive or the E6000 Plus that is weather resistant because it's waterproof. Um, and I will just put a tiny bit around here. Now, sometimes when you're using a rubber cork, even if you've dried the neck of your bottle out, you may find that after you put your glue on that your cork tries to leave. All I recommend for that is to take something heavy and just put it on top of your cork and you may have to kind of lean it up against a wall or something just to help it hold that cork down until it glues. And once it glues, it's 100% on there and you don't have to worry about it. But I will say a way to kind of get around that is just to do the hot glue drips or the wax seal drips and it's going to help keep this in place and lock it in so that kids can't get it open as easily. So now that we have our bottle ready, we can talk about another thing I get questions on wrapping the neck of our bottle. And how do I get mine to wrap as easy as I do? How do I get it to do it without any glue? All those kinds of things. So I have used the same method on all, pretty much all of my potion bottles. Um, and it's a method that I learned from my dad and my sister who do lots of rappelling and rope work and things like that. And this is a knot that they use on their ropes all the time. So all we do is make a U an upside down U, I guess I should say. And then we're gonna take our string and you're gonna go on the outside of that U and you're gonna wrap everything up. 
Now, when you do that, you want to keep a hold of this, and sometimes you just need to kind of help guide your U to keep it in place, but you want to hold the bottom here until you get a good couple wraps, and then you can kind of push everything down so it stays tight. That's when we can go ahead and let go of that bottom and then pull up on the one side of our upside down U here, and that's going to tighten that up. Now, I like to keep a hold of my other end just so it doesn't go anywhere. And then we're gonna just continue to wrap our bottle. If you don't feel comfortable going around, by all means, you can turn your bottle and spin it and you will get the same wrap. It's just gonna take you a little bit longer, but whatever works for you is just fine. And we're just gonna continue to wrap this all the way around. Occasionally you might have to adjust that. Again, as you go, push down so you get a nice tight wrap on the neck of your bottle. We don't want it to be saggy and you don't want it to be too loose either. So you wanna make sure you keep it good and tight so it's nice and consistent all the way around. Now, when we get all the way to the top, I like to hold it. So see how I'm holding this with my finger and I'm gonna pull up on that bottom one again just to make sure everything is good and tight. And then we're just gonna take our scissors and cut that string and then our string is gonna go through our upside down U here. So essentially, again, we're making a knot. So we're gonna pull down on this original bottom of the U, make sure everything stays in place. And when we get to this point right here, where it's almost all the way tight, I like to pull on both ends and that really helps tighten that top one up, the bottom one up, all of it. And just kind of gives everything a little bit more tightness and then we just pull this back behind the rest of the wrap. Now, if we cut this flush and then we give this bottom one just a little tug, not too much, you don't wanna pull it out all the way, it will pull that 100% behind and then we just cut this flush. And you get it as close as you can and then I like to just use my nail or anything like that and you can shove that up underneath so then that way that end disappears. And then we have our wrapped bottle. If any of your strands got a little out of order, all you need to do is take your nail or something sharp and go around like a weeding tool works really well if you don't have nails. And just resort it out and you should be good to go. Now, now that we're wrapped, I sometimes really like how it can be this wispy with a natural jute twine. Sometimes I don't like that at all. And I know I've shown this in a lot of my other videos, but if you take a lighter and very lightly go around the edges, it will burn all of those little wispies off. And it'll leave you with a much cleaner cording. Plus, sometimes it can add a little bit of an aged look to it, which I think is a nice touch on a lot of different bottles. But now we have a bottle without all those wispies with a nice clean wrap. Here's a tip for bottles that are a really weird shape or maybe don't have much of a neck. You can use a thin double-sided adhesive. And when I say thin, I don't necessarily mean thin like this. I mean thin as in not like a foamy double-sided adhesive. Something that's super light and it's just gonna add a very thin layer to your bottle. So if you have trouble with your wrap staying and maybe you're not as good at wrapping it, if you take even just one layer of this and you wrap it closer to the bottom around your bottle before you do your cording, it'll help hold it into place. So this is an option that you could use if you're having trouble with your cording or wrapping staying put. Maybe it's a really slick satin and it doesn't wanna stay in place. Or like I said, if it's got just a very little bit of space and maybe you're having a hard time getting it to stay where you want or to lock in, this may be a helpful tip for you. And I actually picked this one up at the Dollar Tree. It is this crafter square double-sided tape, but any double-sided tape that is thin, so I would look in like your scrapbook sections, is gonna be what you wanna go for. 
But truthfully, if you get it wrapped good and tight, you're not going to need anything to hold that into place. It's, it's not going anywhere. So for this particular bottle, I am going to add some drips on here because I want to be able to give you some tips on that. But I just want to talk about the importance of your glue gun. So I know some people will just heat up the little wax pellets that you use for a wax seal and they will pour that over your bottle. And that's fine. It's just not what I find to be as efficient as using hot glue guns. Now I say hot glue guns because I probably have 12 correction 16 I may have a slight glue gun problem <laughs> but I don't like to mix my colors so I like to have different colors in different glue guns so that way I'm not wasting it because the amount of glue that you waste going from one color to switch it out to another you're going to waste almost this much of a stick for it to completely go through the one color and change to the next one and I find that to just be wasteful so what I do is when I get my good coupons for Michaels or anything like that I like to pick up hot glue guns so I get really good value for a really good hot glue gun now, there are a lot of glue guns on the market, and there's a lot of just knockoff random brands. And yes, some of them do work just fine. However, a quality hot glue gun makes all the difference in the world. I will tell you, my favorite brand, hands down, is the Gorilla Glue brand. Main thing being, look how nice and long this handle is. It's lovely. It makes it so that your one finger isn't getting tired all the time. They have nice stands regardless of whether it's the full size or the mini. But look how nice and long that handle is. It's just perfect. And they have the ability to be a high temperature or a low temperature. The other thing I really like is they have the indicator light on the back, which tells you that it's on. And if you're like me, there's times where you're running out of your craft room or after you make something and you may leave your hot glue gun plugged in accidentally. And I feel like this is just another fail safe to help keep you from having that happen. So, yes, I love my Gorilla Glue hot glue guns. Honestly, I love all the Gorilla Glue glues and everything. They've never let me down. But if you don't want to use a Gorilla Glue gun, my next favorite would be the Surebonder brand. They are right up there with Gorilla Glue. My only beef with them is their handles are not as long, but they do have dual temp properties as well as the indicator light, which is nice. Um, so they are a very good hot glue gun. Again, they are a little more pricey than some of the knockoff ones, but they're worth it. And they have minis, regulars. You can get it where it's dual temp, which I highly recommend, but you can also get it where it's just high temp or low temp, and that works just fine too. My third favorite brand to get would be the Elmer's glue brand. These are nice hot glue guns as well. They have an okay tip. They do melt well. Um, they work better than the generic brands. So those are my three favorite brands in order. I will say Surebonder and Gorilla Glue are right up there, but the reason I put Gorilla Glue over Surebonder is pretty much because of that lovely handle and the fact that all of theirs are dual temperature, which I really like. The other thing that's nice is it just fits better in your hand. These black areas on the Gorilla Glue, it's almost got a rubberized texture that just makes it so that it doesn't slip out of your hand. It fits better. It's just a nice hold. This is not sponsored, nothing like that. I just have obviously way too many glue guns and I can tell you what a good brand is and I can tell you that the Gorilla Glue guns while they are a little pricey they are 100% worth it same thing with the Surebonder ones they're a little more pricey but they are worth it now the other thing I want to touch on is sealing wax hot glue versus regular hot glue so this is a sealing wax hot glue stick and this is made for a hot glue gun but it is sealing wax so it is actually wax it's going to drip much faster and much quicker than a colored hot glue stick so the one that's in here is a silver colored hot glue stick same thing with this one the wax feels different it would snap different if i was to try to break this in half and again it comes out much quicker so when you're using the sealing wax hot glue sticks you're going to want to make sure that you are on low temperature 
when you're using the regular hot glue sticks, most of the time those are going to be a high temp. You can check the bag. It'll tell you what setting you should put it on. But I promise you most of these sealing wax ones, you're going to want low temperature and you don't need to have your gun plugged in very long before you decide to go ahead and use it on your bottles. Sometimes if this gets too hot, it can actually drip too much, which is a cool effect for some bottles, but for others, it may not be what you're going for. So something to consider when you're trying to figure out whether you want to do hot glue sticks or the sealing wax sticks. I have loaded this with a regular hot glue stick. This one is, like I said, a silver one. And I'll try to put links to all of this in the description down below. And I have this on a high setting, which is going to give us really great drips. Now, I do say one other thing is you want to make sure you give your gun ample time to heat up if it is a high temperature stick. Like I said, the sealing wax does not take very long before it is ready to go because if you wait too long, it'll be way too drippy. But your regular hot glue sticks, they're going to run much slower and it's going to take more time for this to give you your good trips. Sometimes even you tap your bottle a little bit. Now, if your drips aren't perfect, because this is hot glue, you've got a little more time to work with it. So you can actually add glue to sections that you want to drip more, and it will start to give you those more defined drips. Now, if you have trouble with your hot glue gun not giving you good drips, you can then use a heat gun. The only thing I will say is be careful with your heat gun not to heat your bottle up so much that it creates pressure with the liquid in there and wants to try to shoot your cork out. Um, you just want to be able to use it to help your drips just a little bit, especially if an area has cooled down and it's not running anymore. You can just kind of hit it with a little bit of that heat and it'll help those run. But truthfully, if you have a good hot glue gun that's doing its job, you really won't need to use that heat gun. And then another thing you might wanna do is use a wax seal stamp to push a design into the top of your cork as well. All right, so now that we have our drips and I added that little stamp detail to the top, I want you guys to notice that a lot of this has settled quite a bit and it's shifting to that other color. So again, this is gonna end up being about this color when it's fully settled. So yes, I do do practice bottles and a lot of times I use these little guys that you can get at the Dollar Tree and I'll put my different mica powders in there so that I can get an idea of what it's gonna transform into. So when this is shaken up, it'll be more of this magenta-y, purple-y pink color instead of this coral-y, neon-y pink. So a couple other tips. We did not distress this bottle up, but sometimes I like to distress the bottle. I feel like it kind of depends on the potion. Some potion bottles I want to be distressed and look aged. Others, I kind of want to make them look like they just you know, were created and are sitting on the shelf ready to be bought in Diagon Alley. So I find that one of the best ways to scuff up your bottles is using sandpaper. And this mixed pack from the Dollar Tree is really great. There's a whole bunch of different grits in here. So you're able to get some different sized distressing. Some work better than others. Um, but then that way you can kind of use it to age up your bottle. Another tip of items that I like to use when aging up a bottle are things like distress oxides in a variety of different colors. These are by Tim Holtz, and I just find that they rub into those scratches really nicely. You can also use acrylic paint. I would water it down a little bit, or you can put it on its full opaqueness and then just take a paper towel and wipe it off, and it'll just kind of settle into those grooves. But that's another way to age your bottle. As you can see, I don't have a label on this one, but normally when I create my labels, I print 99% of them on sticker paper. And the reason I do that is it's just so easy. You're able to go around the outside edge with a matching marker, and then you're able to peel the backing paper off, and you're able to just stick it right onto your jar. And it just makes it so much easier than using Mod Podge or something like that. 
Now, can you use Mod Podge? Of course. Can you use milk if you want to do the way that they used to with the milk labels? Yes, you definitely can. I just prefer using the sticker paper. I find it to be much easier, quicker, and I feel like it just gives a better adhesion and I don't have to wait for it to dry. So since I don't have a label on this one, I kind of want to have you guys put in the comments down below what potion you think this should be. So this goes from this pink color to a purpley color. We can make it whatever potion you want. Let me know when I will make a label for this and then I'll put the label up on my website for you guys to download for free. And while we're talking about my website, all of my labels are available free of charge. They're all on there. You do need to click on the picture. You can search for the label or the link in the description box of all of my specific videos will take you to that specific label. Once you get to that label, the picture you see, you need to click on that and that will get you to the PDF. So you need to make sure that you either click it once or twice, depending on where you find the link, and then it will take you to a PDF. So don't print it until you get to the PDF because that's going to be the highest quality that you can get. And it's also going to be sized appropriately and it'll have all the pieces. Now, all of my labels are free. However, they are for personal use only. Please do not sell my labels on a potion bottle you create on Etsy or any other website. If that's something you want to do and you've learned how to make potions from me, that's fantastic. I'm super glad I was able to help you but please make your own labels. All of my labels are pieces of my art and they are my designs. And I do not want to see them being used on items that I did not create for your personal gain. They are for personal use only. If you're having a party, if you're making it for a friend, by all means, please use it. I have no problem with that. But please do not use my labels for your own profit or personal gain. So some of you will notice that on my labels, they say C and CC Apothecary. And if you don't know what that is, that is Cooking and Craft Chick Apothecary. So essentially, it's me branding my items and letting you know that I created them and I created those labels. Plus, when I made my channel over six years ago, I had no idea what my channel was going to be. I didn't know that it was going to grow to be what it is today and that it is mostly about creating potions and props and replicas as well as a little bit of cooking so when I made my name cooking and craft chick I really wasn't sure what my channel was going to be if I would have known that I was going to be creating mostly potion bottles on here I would have named it something closer to CNCC apothecary or some kind of apothecary instead of what I did name it but I'm six years in obviously I'm not going to change my name so that's why I brand all of my items with CNCC Apothecary. So hopefully I was able to answer some questions you may have had about why I do things or what works the best, things like that. If you have any other questions, please feel free to put those in the comments down below. I do enjoy reading what you guys put down there. I love seeing pictures of your guys' potions through Instagram and things like that. So if you make any of my potions, I love being tagged in them. Or you can always message me on Instagram or send me an email. I love seeing what you guys create. It's super fun for me. But I know recently when I did a collaboration with Ashley from Create Craft Costume, she had some issues and questions about ways to make your drips work better or wrapping your bottles, things like that. So I just wanted to make sure I could touch on a few of those things for you guys because I do get a lot of questions about all of the items I went over today in the comments every single day. And I felt like this was a great way for me to be able to hit on all those items and also give you some other tips and tricks of things you can do to create really fun potion bottles that look like they're straight out of the Wizarding World. So with that being said, if you guys like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we will catch you guys later. Thanks so much.